NASCAR is getting an in-season bracket tournament in 2025. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt, and yes, NASCAR, much like the NBA, is getting an in-season tournament. The end-season tournament will happen over TNT's five races in 2025, with qualifying for the bracket to happen during the final three races of Amazon Prime's portion of the schedule. So let's break it down real quick. 32 drivers will qualify for this bracket. How do they qualify? Well, whoever has the best finish over those three races on Amazon Prime will be seated accordingly, and tiebreakers will be decided by the points. There will then be 32 drivers when we get to the first race on TNT's portion of the schedule. That will then break down from 32... 16, 8, 4, until we have our final two drivers in this bracket challenge and TNT's fifth race going head-to-head -head during the rest of the race. Winner of that bracket challenge, whoever finishes higher, takes home $1 million. There appears to be no playoff or points implications as a part of this, which I think is a good thing because this is just kind of another gimmick in my book. Yeah, we've seen these things happen before. I've seen a lot of people on the internet be like, this is a lot like the Winston Million or the Noble Challenge. Eh, kind of. Those races were different. Winston Million was about winning three of the four races. Uh, Bill Elliott, shout out to him, took home a million bucks. No Bull was about qualifying for that and then winning the next No Bull race and then taking home a million dollars. Jeff Gordon, great at that. Dale Earnhardt uh, did it as well. This is very different. This is not like Dash for, ca Dash for Cash. This is more of a, you know, not a distraction, but a race within a race, essentially. And maybe it will help spice up the race and maybe it will help draw in a casual viewer. I'm just not entirely sure. Maybe at the end of the day, it's just a great way for Denny Hamlin to be able to hoist a trophy like LeBron James finally got to do in the in-season tournament this year. Uh, feel better about yourself, maybe. But uh, like I said, it kind of feels a bit like a gimmick, especially at a time where this sport has a ton of gimmicks already, right? We have a playoff system. Okay. We have an elimination playoff format. All right. And then we have a winner take all one race championship. Bizarre. Don't really love that. You also have a win in the regular season. Lock yourself into the playoffs. Win a stage. Oh, there's a stage point. It's already slightly confusing for the casual fan. Now adding in a bracket challenge, which is purely just monetary, has nothing to do with the points, is going to confuse some people even more because I'm sure there's going to be people that tune into that fifth race and they're like, Oh, yeah, I saw this guy win. He wins the championship. Well, not really, because we're not going to decide that for another three months, and we're going to do that in the desert at Phoenix while everybody fights off uh, sleep. So I think there's some maybe a bit of a disconnect here. Because like I said, the sport has a ton of gimmicks already, and trying to explain the playoff format in point system to a casual fan right now is already difficult. I know there's some people that are going to say it's so easy. It's not that difficult. It is for you and I because we've lived in this format for the better part of a decade now and it's become second nature. But trying to explain to a casual fan that if you win in the regular season that locks you into the playoffs, even though you're outside the top 16 and they don't just take the 16 drivers, they take the drivers that have already won and if you're already in on points and you don't make it and if you are in the top 16 and somebody outside has a win, then you drop out, you don't make it. But if you win a stage in the regular season, that's a stage point for the playoffs and that helps you have more playoff points. And if you win the regular season championship, that's more more playoff points and that helps you out but and then if you win 10 races during the season when we get down to that final race of the year and you don't qualify for phoenix you don't get to race for a championship yeah it's a little bit difficult to explain to a casual fan and it's a flawed system adding in another gimmicky type of thing uh i just don't know if nascar needs it right it kind of just continues on the trend of like instead of trying to focus on fixing the actual on-track product issue that they have it's like, oh, let's introduce another gimmick to try to distract people from this. And how furious are people going to be if we have like a Dover in the playoff or in this bracket challenge next year and nobody can pass and everybody just sitting around being like, well, this is really stupid. Or a Martinsville where passing is absolutely impossible now with the Gen 7 car. You're going to have a lot of people sitting around being like, well, this is kind of lame and stupid at this point. I just don't necessarily know if it's the direction NASCAR needs to go. I'm going to do it with open mind. If it is exciting, I'm I'm here for it. NASCAR fed the story to Sportico, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, it's a Penske media company as well. And they didn't even cite Denny Hamlin and Dirty Mo coming up with this idea last year and doing it during the summer uh, of 2023. Uh, Denny Hamlin said he loves the idea and he's going to collect next year, uh, meaning that he says he's going to win this end-season tournament. And maybe he will because... We all know that he's not going to walk out of Phoenix holding a trophy anytime soon by the 
um, you know, the historical records of his performances. So yeah, I just, I'm, I'm wishy-washy on it. Like, I don't necessarily love it. I don't hate it. I'm willing to give it a chance. And I know there's going to be a lot of fans that are going to say, we need to stop letting the networks dictate, right? Because obviously Prime and TNT want to make a splash. Obviously Fox has the Daytona 500. They have the all-star race. They have that portion of the schedule. Then you have NBC. They get the championship race, so they have their big marquee event. Amazon Prime is going to get the Coke 600 on Memorial Day. They're going to get the three qualifying races for this bracket, and then TNT gets the bracket. So all four media partners get some sort of big event or gimmick in their portion of the schedule. And I get it. At the same time, though, the networks have really dictated the sport in a direction that is good or bad. You can make an argument either way. I don't know if everybody loves the playoff format, especially the one race winner take all. I do find it funny that we get three races to qualify for this end season bracket, but we can't figure out how to get three races for the championship round. We just have to continue to have that at one race winner take all, even though I feel like everybody hates that format. And it certainly hasn't given them a ratings boost that they've, you know, been hoping for from that obviously too they're fighting with the nfl on the same day but yeah an in-season bracket tournament is coming and mm, like i said i'm neither here nor there on it i'm interested to see what the feedback is from a lot of people uh if they did a dash for cash fine i'm, I'm okay with that like that's all right at least, like I said, it's going to give Dale Jr. and whoever else is in the booth with him something to talk about during these five races on TNT. It gives TNT an opportunity to do this, and NASCAR is looking at this as a way to generate more revenue, right, through betting and whatever other, you know, bracket challenge, bracket buster type of games that they can do with it. And I completely understand that, right? That's also part of the teams and the RTA. And one of the sticking points is they want to be a part of NASCAR's new revenue, you know, streams, that being gambling. And now this is very focused on on gambling content uh, i cannot wait to i don't know what gambling partner tnt is paired up with but whatever ad read it is i'm sure we're going to be beat over the head with it like it's fox bet or espn bet or DraftKings or fanduel or whatever uh you know flavor of the month they have over at tnt so either way this is going to happen it's going to be a thing that we're going to, have to talk about next year at the end of the day, does anybody really remember who wins the in-season bracket challenge? Probably not. I mean, at this point, nobody remembers that the Lakers won the in-season NBA tournament because, honestly, who cares? They were a one-and-done in the playoffs. So, yeah, I don't necessarily... They weren't one-and-done. They weren't. They, uh, what, advanced the second round, maybe? I don't remember. Doesn't matter. Nobody remembers. Who cares? And I feel like that's how this is going to go. In the moment, we'll be like, oh, that was cool. But by the time we get to November, everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah. And then by the time Daytona rolls around in February, nobody's going to remember it. And then the bracket challenge is going to come back around. They'll be like, oh, defending champ, you know, Chris Bush or whoever. And like, oh, yeah, he did win that last year. And I still think that the million dollars is overplayed. The million dollar prize for the All-Star Race has been the same thing since 2003. And adjusted for inflation, it's $1.7 million now. So the better part of, what, 23 years They've had the same prize, and it just, or not 23 years, sorry, my apologies, 21 years, and it just has, I think it's run its course, and now having another million dollars, again, I don't necessarily know if fans care about rich drivers getting richer. I think it's a little tone deaf in the situation, uh, but hey, if that's what's going to attract viewers, I'm for it if it attracts viewers. If not, it maybe just becomes more convoluted and complicated than it needs to be, so let me know in the comments what you think about this in-season bracket challenge. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.